All right, here we go this morning. I moved the junior mints. And so, who wants to give me a quick synopsis of where we are here with Nehemiah? They're trying to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. They're rebuilding the wall. Nehemiah came from Babylon to rebuild the, the walls. walls. The walls. Right? And actually, at this point in time, the walls are up. But the gates are not installed yet. And the neighbors are getting a little bit concerned, right? And we're starting out here in chapter 6 in verse 1. Now it came about when it was reported that Sambalot and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of the enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and that no breach remained in it, although at that time I had not set up the doors in the gates. Right? Mm -hmm. I got a word here written. I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> now, Sambalot is going to tell us here, you know, where these guys are from, but basically this is kind of a surrounding of Jerusalem, right? And there's some interesting things about these guys. Now, the one guy, Geshem, is an Arab. And the Arabic people are in the south, and they're kind of nomadic, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> Sambalot is basically to the north and Tobiah to the east, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And verse 2, and that Sambalot and Geshem sent a messenger to me saying, Come, let us meet together at Shephirim in the plain of Ono, but they were planning to harm me. Now, how did he know that? God knows. Apparently somebody told him. That's There were, you know, when you are swearing to uphold the Constitution and defend it, it says to defend it against the enemies without and within. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we hardly ever focus on the enemies within that keep wanting to destroy the Constitution like the guy in the White House. <laughs> He's doing a good job of it. Yeah. He is. Well, he had the same problem. In, in Jerusalem here, we have enemies within the walls who were politically aligned and economically aligned with the enemies outside the walls. So we had all kinds of spy stuff going on here. And maybe one of them was actually helping out Nehemiah, and maybe just God told him with common sense, why on earth would they want you to come out there 30 miles from Jerusalem, right, seven miles from Joppa on the seacoast, right, mm -hmm. you know, into this valley, which would be a natural trap. <laughs> why on earth would they want you to do that? Why on earth would they want you to stop what you were called by God to do if it you know, wasn't for uh, evil reasons, <laughs> right? So he got the idea. He said, I don't think that's a good thing to do. And so I sent messengers to them in verse 3 saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it to come down to you? When the cat's away, the mice will play. <laughs> he figured if he wasn't there, the work would actually, if not slow away down, it completely stop while he was gone. And he couldn't just zip over there at 70 miles an hour, could he? No. He's going to be gone a while, and especially if something happened to him, right? And he says, I'm doing a great work. And he notice he says, I, so I sent messengers. He wanted to make sure the message was delivered correctly. <laughs> More than one messenger that went with the message, right? Now, 
How often has God given you something to do, whether you see it as directly from God or indirectly, and how easy is it to get distracted? Very easy. If God's got something for you to do, Satan's going to have a distraction. Oh, absolutely. Right? And how often do Christian men succumb to the distraction? Most of the Depends time. on how pretty she is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or how much money she has. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's a complete setup. Mm-hmm. Ask Frank Gifford. <laughs> Frank Gifford. Yeah. Announcer, football, mm-hmm. Hall of Famer. That magazine hired a, guy, a prostitute to trick him. Oh, oh, well, that's been a long time ago. Yeah. But point is, it was just a complete setup. Mm-hmm. But he fell for the, the bait. He, yeah. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. And Satan, you know Satan, he's always testing us to find out where our weak link is, aren't they? Mm-hmm. You know, so that he can find a way to get us and get us to stop doing. You know, in our case today, we're not building walls, the physical walls, right? But what about the spiritual mm-hmm. walls? You know, our defenses. And are we completing that task? What about our testimony? How often does Satan trick us into doing something that gives us, quote, a bad name simply because he can't keep us from going to heaven, can he? Mm. So all he can do is destroy our testimony to keep somebody else from going with us if we fail. Right? Nehemiah looked, looked at what these guys are saying. He said... Hey, Jack, (laughs) I'm doing something God has called me to do. I've known this for some time now, right? Remember the four years he was preparing to talk to the king? (laughs) (laughs) So he answers them saying, why would I stop this? We had a conversation uh, just last week about the main thing the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing oh yeah (laughs) right and he's doing the main thing so why would he do a subordinate thing and not keep doing the main thing this is what God called him to do right so then in verse 4 they sent messengers to me four times in this manner, and I answered them in the same way. I will not be distracted. That Nehemiah is showing discernment and wisdom. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to call on if we would stop and ask him, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Say, what is the right thing for me to do here? Such as last night at 2 o'clock, you know. In the morning. <laughs> or in this morning, Summer says, am I going to have to go to some place, some hospital? <laughs> I said, no, honey. We just have to tell Satan to take his suicidal thoughts and leave now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Not happening. God gives you wisdom and tells you what to do. If you just listen, Nehemiah is listening, Mm -hmm. right? Are we listening? (laughs) I think most of the time, or a lot of the time, is that we will build the wall up, but we will leave one little space open. Leave the gates open. (laughs) So that we can get out and come and go. We may barely fit through it, but but we'll always have... You know, a lot of times certain things that we just won't let go of, you know. Certain things that we like. Yeah. You know, right? Certain things that we can make, not well, excuses for doing or 
Yeah. Or not doing. Yeah, we're good at making excuses, aren't we? Absolutely. Rationalizing. That's I should word. be able to say this or do that mm-hmm. or, you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, we are good at that. In the sales game, you tell people, you, know, you got to understand, people do not make logical decisions. Mm-hmm. They make emotional decisions only. Now, there are people like me who are very good at rationalizing, you know, <laughs> So we can apply our logic so we can still make our emotional decision Mm -hmm. and sound logical, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is we all make emotional decisions. We don't buy what we need. We buy what we want. want. (laughs) That's right. Right? Ask a lady in the kitchen when you're selling a house. Mm -hmm. You got to sell the lady the kitchen or you're not selling the house. (laughs) Right? Number one thing you sell on the house is the kitchen. That's right. Okay. So now, in verse 5, the Samuel has sent his servant to me in the same manner a fifth time with an open letter. What's an open letter? Unsealed. Well, but what, what's the difference between an open letter and a non-open letter? An open letter is read publicly. Just like today, if you send an open letter to somebody, but you send it to the newspaper to be published so everybody reads it, Right? It's not just sent to Nehemiah. It's sent to Nehemiah, but it's published. In this case, they have somebody that's going to stand at the city gate and read it out loud. Now we got the, the uh, internet. Yeah, the internet. Oh, yeah. You can Put publish anything. And you can't stop the sucker. Yeah. No matter how wrong it is, you can publish it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay? So he says, and is written in the letter, it is reported among the nations. See? This is not something that's happening. Everybody around here knows this, right? The Goshmu says that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And therefore, you are rebuilding the wall, and you are to be their king, according to these reports. You know, there's other journalists that make up statistics. People with causes that just make up statistics. Did you know a million women a year are having abortions in back alleys? Totally made up. Totally made up. There's no such stat anywhere. Not to mention, how would you know if it's all done in back alleys? Yeah, how would you know that? Yeah, it's kind of like the Roman guards. Mm -hmm. While we were sleeping, Mm -hmm. his his servants came and took him away. How would you know that if you were sleeping? sleeping. (laughs) (laughs) Right? You know, I mean, they do that stuff all the time. Well, he's saying, here's these reports. And you also appointed prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem concerning you. (laughs) So you got this stuff just being made up. But what they're trying to do is embarrass Nehemiah because they couldn't get him to stop doing it, right? So they're saying, let me, let's embarrass him. Okay? A king in Judah. These prophets are going to appoint him as a king in Judah. Now, first off, is Nehemiah a Levite? No. Okay. Is he in any way, shape, and line to be king? No. Not that we know of, no. right? Yeah. And now it will be reported to the king, the, the king, this would be, of course, Artaxerxes, right? According to these reports, so come now, let us take counsel together. <laughs> Come on out here so we can whack you. (laughs) Right? They tried to embarrass him. And I sent a message to him saying, Such things as you are saying have not been done, but you are inventing them in your own... The actual word is heart. It's translated mind because... But in the Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. They felt like all the decision making is made in the heart. (laughs) Because... The way the body reacts when you make decisions, you feel it in your heart. <laughs> so he, he says, you're just making all this up. There's no way. This is not happening, and I'm not coming down. Verse 9, for all of them were trying to frighten us, thinking they will be, <clears throat> become discouraged with the work, and it will not be done. <clears throat> So here they're finding, trying to find this new way, right? Mm-hmm. 
and they're trying to sway public opinion, and maybe some of the people will start believing this junk, which, you know how the public, especially in America today, we're so uneducated that you can sway the public to believe practically anything, right? But Nehemiah is like, I'm not doing it. You know, their motives were selfish. They wanted to defend their position, their political and their economic power, right, in the region. Nehemiah's motives were pure. God called me to rebuild this wall. Right? I had a, uh, <clears throat> I had one in church that I pastored. And uh, I, I think at the point where I am now, I can look back and see things that are uh, apropos to the, what the scriptures say. And uh, we had a, a slowdown in our church one, one year, small church, but we had uh, 42 people uh, baptized one year. Mm-hmm. And, um, but there were 42 people, uh, families, that had moved that same year, you know. But the pastor got uh, they, they they took on what all these people are leaving. Were. So I had one man at, uh, in the in the church. Uh, we got down to a place where I had asked our uh, son, our um, music leader, good good man, good, good and um, and I told him one day I said, you know, we're going to have to do something. You know, we're we're going to have to lower our income. Or one of us is going to have, have to leave, and um, and um, I said I, I I don't know what what you want to do about it. Well, he decided that he would start looking for another church to go to. And I said I'll help you do that. But this other man in the church thought I was kicking him out. And he caught, he gave me a scathing letter, and uh, I read through that thing, you know, and I, I I was ready to go over there and do battle. You know. and, yeah. Um, oh, he he had a list of things he wanted me to do, and and it was it was bad, and um, my wife knew that I was down in the doldrums, you know, and she said, what, okay, what is it? And so I showed her the letter. And she said, don't need anything. He wanted me to confront the church and give this list to, that he has in going. And uh, so I tore it up, shredded it, and I never mentioned it to the church or this man, mm-hmm. and I, I could just see that he was under. He was waiting for me to, to come in there and do that. You know? right. right. And so um, uh, it it just passed over because I took the authority out of him in right. that way. And the wis- it, and wisdom that you got from your wife. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, th- these things happen. We, we read these and think, boy, this is bad back there. Same thing and happening we today. Have, we have good pastoral leadership. There's always an enemy out there that's willing to lock, knock yeah. him down. And sometimes we let Satan use us without realizing that's what we're that's doing. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Last line, in verse 9. But now, oh God, strengthen my hands. Amen. That's right. He prayed. Where does his wisdom come from, right? From God. From God. God's the source of strength and the source of all the solutions, <laughs> right? So when I entered the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Methipabel, who was confined at home for some reason, 
He said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you, and they are coming to kill you at night. Right? Of course, coming to kill him, is an unlawful act. So he wants to scare him into going in, into the inner temple. Nehemiah is not a priest. He's not allowed to go in there. And, by the way, he's not about to go in there. Verse 11. But I said, should a man like me flee? For could one such as I go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Amen. <laughs> then I perceived that surely God had not sent him, but he was uttered, he uttered his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. <laughs> the enemy within. He was hired for this reason that I might become frightened and act according and sin so that they might have an evil report in order that they could reproach me. Verse 14. Remember, O oh my God, Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these works of theirs, and also Noadiah the prophetess and the rest of the prophets who were trying to frighten me. There's more than just those few, isn't there? Mm -hmm. This is the only mention of Noadiah <laughs> in Scripture. Really? Yeah. So we have we have known nothing about her, <laughs> other than she was on the wrong side here. <laughs> okay. But he prayed again. Again, where's the solution source? It's God. from God. Mm -hmm. Verse fifteen. So the wall was completed on the 25th of the month of Elu in 52 days. In 52 days, right? And it came about when all our enemies heard it, and all the nations surrounding us saw it, they lost their confidence, for they recognized that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Nehemiah stayed focused, and who, who's getting the credit? The Lord God, who's supposed to get it, right? <laughs> not, not supposed to come to us, although we do credit Nehemiah certainly for being diligent, being obedient to God, right? And getting the job done that God called him to do. Now, remember, he's ended up being there for 12 years. <laughs> He built the wall in 52 days once they got started. Mm -hmm. He didn't go back to Babylon for 12 years. <clears throat> also in those days, many letters went from the nobles from Judah to Tobiah. <laughs> and Tobiah letters came to them. Again, the enemy without and the enemy within. They're communicating, right? For many in Judah were bound by oath to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Era, And his son, Johannah, had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Bekachiah, Becker, whatever it's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> these names, it's interesting that Sanballat means it's Babylonian for sin gives life. <laughs> That's what his name means, okay? We know that he's a Horonite, mm -hmm. which is 15 miles from Jerusalem, but he was probably actually a Hebrew. Tobiah means Yahweh is good. Again, probably a Jewish guy, mm -hmm. right? But in this case, they're the enemy within, so to speak. They're within the territory. They're not, they're not within the walls like some of these prophets, some of these other guys, right? Like Shemaiah, right? Moreover, they were speaking about his good deeds in my presence. It's the, the people inside are coming to Nehemiah telling him how good Tobiah is, mm -hmm. the one who wanted to kill him, right? And reported my words to him. They were spies. <laughs> then Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. <laughs> it 
Hey. The enemy doesn't just quit and give up, right? If if uh, the war with radical Islam, I would call it with Islam, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, right? When they lose a battle, do they quit? No. When they lose a war, do they quit? No. If they lose a whole correct. century, do they quit? Uh -huh. 1,500 years this has been going on, and people are wondering, when are we going to win? Never. <laughs> All we can do is beat them down, right, so they know they can't win today. And that's when they stop attacking until they think they're ready again. <laughs> So how would you apply this lesson of Nehemiah to your life? Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Your walk with God is your main thing. Well, keep on keeping on. Don't let anything distract you from that. When your quiet time gets interrupted, right, or the time you set aside for your Bible study, when things are going good, this is me. when things are going good, I don't turn to God as near as much as when things are going bad. You mentioned rationalizing before. He could basically rationalize going into the temple. Sure he could. You know, yeah. He could say either stay out here and die or go into the temple. So, you know. He could have, right. But he said, "I'm God gave me work to do. I'm going to do it. I'm trusting the Lord, Right. These guys can't mm -hmm. touch me. <clears throat> there was a movie called Gods and Generals about the Civil War, and I don't remember the Confederate soldier's name. He was a general, and they asked him about the battlefield. He says, I'm as safe on the battlefield as I am at home in my own bed because God decides the day that I'm going to die. <laughs> it's up to God. It's probably Jackson. Maybe Stonewall. I don't, I don't think so, but I, I'd have to go back and watch the movie again to see. You know, but anyway, I remember that line because that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. We can trust God. If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, we're, nothing's going to happen to us that isn't supposed to. <laughs> right? When it's our time to go home, he'll take us home. Yeah. Whether it's on the battlefield you know, or at home in our own bed. So we can, like Nehemiah did, we can trust God to do what he's called us mm -hmm. to do and given us the resources, etc., to get it done. And that includes building the spiritual wall around your house, defending your home and your family. Right. Put the so, gates up. Put the gates up. Mm -hmm. Right? 